Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 16. The Reverend Dr. Matthew Harrison is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. And the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, while I bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have become your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three seahs of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you, about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men set out from there, and they looked down toward Sodom. O Lord, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget it. Uh, I was the only guy taking Greek years ago on an exchange with the seminary in Adelaide, South Australia. And the prof was a crusty old guy. He's still alive. Clary Prebenau. And we were reading Luther's commentary on Genesis in Latin. And it was Genesis 22, the sacrifice of Isaac. And when he read the text of the words of Isaac, Father, where is the sacrifice? As he read Luther's response to that, he broke down crying in front of me. Luther waxing about what Abraham must have felt at that moment. We know the text from Hebrews, which says that Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, believing that God could raise the dead. He had a promise. Abraham had received the promise already in Genesis 12, and then 15, and then Genesis 17, Isaac is promised. And then here in this text, the promise comes again. By this time next year, you'll have a son. Luther 
was working on the Genesis, his Genesis commentary, lecturing on Genesis for the last 15 years of his life. And uh, it's one of the most remarkable texts that we have from Luther. He finished it just next month in October of his last full year of life. And he said, ah, now that is the dear Genesis. And he said at his birthday on November 10th, just after, I won't live to see Easter. And he was right. What is remarkable about the Genesis commentary is that he doesn't talk about law and gospel. He talks about the law and the promise. It's all about the law and the promise. And he talks a lot about suffering of the patriarchs and the difficulties they went through, like Jacob wrestling with the angel at Peniel. He says, this isn't sort of a play match. This isn't an unserious thing like two children wrestling. This angel, for all Abraham, or for all Jacob realized, was trying to kill him. And Jacob wrestles the angel of the Lord to a standstill. He says, I will not let go unless you bless me. So it's right in the midst of the most severe crisis. And not only that, the most severe crisis, which is an attack of God. Get your mind around that. A most severe crisis, which is apparently, evidently, God's own attack against the patriarch. He believes against hope. Why? the promise. He has the promise. The three men show up. Luther waxes a little bit about the Trinity, not really much at all. Many of our fathers believed. You know, when, when uh, Abram addresses the chief guy, he says, Lord, with all capitals, that, that's the word for Yahweh. So somehow Abram knows that these three men are extremely special. In fact, he addresses the one of them as Yahweh. And they once more give the promise again. Why do they give the promise again now for the fourth time to Abraham? Because he needed it. And what is a promise? A promise is a word that says something good is coming to you. You don't see it now. You don't lay your eyes on it personally at the moment. But somebody has testified, given a testament, given a testimony. Some reliable person says, I promise. And in God's case, we have the most reliable being in all the universe saying, I promise. Sarah laughed. <laughs> Isn't it great you see these honest responses in the Bible? It's so comforting. God promises a lot of stuff to us. Uh, he promises that we are righteous for the sake of Christ, that all of our sins are covered by Christ. And we, like Sarah, at times go, <laughs> yeah, right. But that's what he promises. We don't see it in ourselves so often. We see something quite different, don't we? He promises that the church is his beautiful, sanctified, justified bride. He promises that he will never forsake the church. He promises a glorious future for the church. He promises that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. And a lot of times, if we're honest, what do we do? Yeah, right. That's not what I see. No, it's not. 
but it's God's own promise, isn't it? We see sufferings and difficulties and challenges in our lives. We see a world unhinged, inexplicable animosity and hatred around us. We're tempted to join in. What do we see but suffering and misery? But God lays before us the suffering and misery of his own beloved son. When we are tempted in a cynicistic and uh, uh, doubting fashion to doubt the promise and laugh, <laughs> yeah, right. He put himself on a cross, kept his promise, wounded for our transgressions, suffered for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And then, just as he promised, he rose from the grave on the third day. It's true. We have promise kept. We know it's true. It has grabbed our hearts. We hear of a blessed resurrection, and we think, yeah, this body, that body that I'm burying. Ha! <laughs> right. But we have a promise. Just as Christ has risen from the grave, so too all of us. And I believe it because the promise has been verified with the testator's own blood. The promise is yours, my friends, and it holds good. It's your anchor of hope into the future. It's not a kind of anchor that holds you back in life, drags you behind, keeps you from going forward. No, this promise is an anchor into the future pulling you, pulling you to the time when you shall see the promise face to face. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.